Facebook. Oh, wrong one. Wrong Hi guys. One again. <laughs> We're here for the tall of and the short of it with Betsy and Jenny. And um, it is a gloomy day today. Matches right. how I feel. I know. Poor Betsy. If we went back and looked at all of our lives since Christmas break, I think I'm sick and I know. like over half of them. I know. It's very sad. I feel bad. Plus, you had sick kids today, too, didn't yes. you? Like, in your classroom. Ew. I've had a sick week. I've been missing. When you don't have very many kids. I have ten kids. And when you're missing, I've been missing three to four every day this week. Ugh. Yikes. So, so it's hard to get it's hard to get things done when you're missing kids. Isn't yes, it? for sure. We've just we've been cleaning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is super hard to believe it's the last day of February. Yes, I actually already changed my calendar. Um, it seems crazy. And so that means we're wrapping up our All Things Preschool Month mm -hmm. um, today with our topic: best practices in special pre K and funding it. Um, and there's some reasons I decided to throw this in as a topic. Number one, because it's a very timely topic with I what's going on. I also think she did this because she just wanted to talk the whole time. Uh-uh. That wasn't it. <laughs> no, because I don't know anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> you do, too, know about best practice. No, I meant, <laughs> but a lot of it's the funding piece of yes, it. And I, yes, that'll be towards the end of our conversation, oh no. but yes. Yeah. Um, so, but we think it's important that um, communities know um, why, um, why it seems like schools are struggling all the time and why and what, what could be done about it so that if you want to... Struggling financially? Struggling financially, yes, struggling financially. And that if you, as a concerned citizen, um, wanted to do something about it, then you're more educated to know what to say. Um, when you make those calls or write those letters or emails to your legislators. So again, disclaimer, not the opinions of our school corporation, but ours alone. Um, mostly mine, I guess, today. <laughs> but no, Betsy, I know we've talked well, about this ton of times. I can talk about this top part. Yes, you totally can. can. So we're going to start with a concept that is a weird legal term. Um, that but we if all... you are a special educator in your mm -hmm. life, you know it like yes you know it quite <laughs> it is well your life so do you want to talk about what that is okay we call it lre it stands for least restrictive environment and what that is is the environment that is least restrictive but meaning like our goal is to always get a student into as close i mean we would love them completely in a general ed type setting as much as possible mm -hmm. um, and for some kids it is completely immersed with just a little support and then other students need um, in what we would call a more restrictive environment meaning they need more support so they need to be in a classroom with fewer students mm -hmm. um, the teacher to student ratio is um, much smaller and so mm -hmm. um, but I guess if I was gonna summarize it really quick it would be they need to be educated to the greatest extent possible with gen ed peers. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and that, but the key point is that to the greatest extent possible, they still have to be making progress or that's not their least restrictive mm -hmm. environment. So we could put a kid in a general ed classroom all day and say, hey, we're doing, that's his, you know, but it's not his least restrictive environment if he's not successful. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty key component. For sure, and we're required as districts, school districts, to provide a complete continuum for that. We can't just say we don't have self-contained classrooms, or we don't have resource rooms, or we don't have this, or we don't have that. We we yeah. So we were just laughing that yeah, there are things we cannot say. And exactly, that is one, of one of them we can't say is we don't have the money for this, or we don't have that, um, because we're required as a district to provide a complete continuum of of options for mm -hmm. that so that the child is educated to the greatest extent possible with general ed peers. And that's why, I mean, and it, we're not gonna talk about that necessarily today, but that's why some districts participate in a co-op mm -hmm. is because they can't, um, they don't have the financial means or the space to provide that all of the things that would fall on that right. continuum. So they share. So they shared, often a larger school corporation is the one that says, all right, you know, mm -hmm. yes, we have this, so, 
um, you guys can send some kids um, to us. To yeah, us, for sure. So, and that's kind of why that is a um, why that's out there. And then, um, <clears throat> well, and how it applies to preschool is, I right. guess, where we're going yeah. with this. Um, so, ideally, we would have typical preschool classrooms in our public schools that we could include kids with disabilities mm -hmm. in. Um, to the greatest extent they're being successful. Some public schools have preschool classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, the lucky ones that were picked for the On My Way Pre-K pilot, um, or um, there's some communities that have community preschools that are good um, to, to be utilized in that way. But I think it's a struggle for a lot of smaller and rural districts mm -hmm. to um, who don't have access to um, preschool in their in their building? Mm -hmm. How do, how do we include students with disabilities when we don't even have a regular preschool? Mm -hmm. um, so, then some school pre, some schools fund it through title like have a title one preschool, mm -hmm. and those spots are very coveted, mm -hmm. like in districts like yeah. they don't want to give those spots up um, because they want to be able to serve as many at risk kids as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're required by law to still, you know, consider taking some kids with disabilities. Head Start programs are supposed to consider and mm -hmm. have kids with disabilities included. So, like, there's those kinds of things. If that's available in your community, you're right. very lucky. Um, but, uh, like I said, a lot of small and rural districts um, mm -hmm. just don't have a lot of choices there. So they end up with a separate class option, um, mm -hmm. which we call developmental preschool. And all the students in there um, have, have IEPs and are being served um, through special ed. Um, some districts do have the typical peer programs where um, some parents in the community can pay to send their child to the developmental preschool just so they have some typical mm -hmm. peer models. Um, but even that's rare anymore. Mm -hmm. I, know, I don't know that they do that everywhere. Well, I think that would also depend on space and numbers and mm -hmm. absolutely but the state really wants and is really pushing for us to provide inclusive options when there is an option mm -hmm. um, so I look to see that um, the push for more general ed options in schools so that we have that um, that that way to go um, also it's it's hard to do the typical peer programs because you want natural proportions you don't want 50% of the kids' IEPs and 50% mm -hmm. not, or 75 IEPs and 25% not, um, because that's just not, it's hard to serve kids like that. Mm -hmm. So um, that push for universal pre-K is not going anywhere. I think, I think we're gonna try to do that, but right now it does not seem that that is a budget priority for Indiana. Um, they have the pilots out there going and they keep looking at when and how quickly to expand them but I don't see universal pre-k happening for a while government's just slow <coughs> so I have a question um, mm -hmm. about the universal mm -hmm. pre-k like you said the pilots I'd be in, and you may not know this but I'd be interested to know where those are being piloted mm -hmm. in the sense of like you talked about it mm -hmm. being difficult in um, rural areas and especially or here's something space finding a classroom open mm -hmm. is hard <laughs> exactly. and um, I mean that's and when I say finding a classroom open, not just a classroom. I mean, when you're talking about preschool, oftentimes you're talking about potty training. You need a bathroom in there. You need mm -hmm. so it's not just like any classroom. Facilities can necessarily... is a big mm -hmm. deal when it comes to preschool. So they're not necessarily just right there. So that's just it would be interesting to mm -hmm. be able to like if there was a list of the schools like, that are piloting I, it. I it'd think be interesting. there are seven counties that got on my way preschool pilot grant money, um, but I know there are also like private daycares and preschools that could apply for it as well. Okay. Um, so again, there's another instance of, you know, things that we, you know, they're, they're being kind of, the money's kind of being divided between mm -hmm. public and private again, Okay. which sometimes hurts us. Well, like I said, so. I just would be interested, because I think that's something, yeah, like we, I'm just thinking of us right now, we do have an extra classroom um, down at the other end of our building, mm -hmm. But it's not like the, the facilities, like I have a sink in my room. I don't teach preschool, but 
in preschool, that's kind of an important mm-hmm. thing. But I also have a bathroom. So does our preschool. Our preschool has mm-hmm. um, both. But our other preschool doesn't. Doesn't. But we do have one Title One preschool, yeah. but they don't have their own bathroom. But they they don't. Ne- kids don't start coming at that to that necessarily right. like age three. Yeah, they don't come at three. They're only so. four year olds. And most of the preschool pilots are just four year olds. Um, which doesn't help us when we need places to include kids that are three. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, you're very lucky if you have a Head Start programs or early Head Start programs mm-hmm. in your area that that can be utilized um, mm-hmm. for that purpose. So, um, that leads me to the discussion of um, why it's so difficult. I mean, uh, more reasons. It's so difficult to provide those inclusive preschool options. Um, and it all comes back to funding. I mean, pretty much that every doesn't everything. Yes, doesn't everything come back to funding? Um, whether it be <laughs> school related or mm-hmm. or personal. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I'm not on the beach because of funding, for sure. So I guess it helps to understand a little bit more about school finance to help you um, conceptualize why preschool special ed might be hurting your k-12 programming so let me let me explain this in a way that i'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible so when the federal government decided that public schools are going to be responsible for providing special education to three to five year olds um, they federally mandated that and promised that they would pay for 40 percent of the cost. Well, that hasn't happened ever. Um, as you know, in our government, they pass laws and then the appropriations for the money process is a completely separate process. And sometimes they pass laws and never get around to appropriating the money. So when they finally did do appropriations for this particular rule at the federal level, they assigned a specific amount of dollars for special ed preschool to every district in um, the United States, well, to every state in the United States, and then the states took that money and divvied it up between the districts, okay? So each school corporation has an amount they get every year from the federal government. Now, I'm just gonna, I'll just give you an example. Ours is just under (laughs) $17,000, which pays for the paraprofessional in our room, so one teacher's aid, okay? So that's what we get from the federal government for all of our preschool special education. Um, Other school districts that are huge, they're gonna get more than that. I mean, because they have more kids, but that amount never changes. So every single year since that was passed, I think in the 80s sometime, was when the, it was very first, because yes, 91 was in the state did their rule, so it had to have been like in the late 80s um, that it was done at the federal level, because it takes a while to go from federal to state. So ever since then, um, hey Jake, um, we have gotten the same exact amount of money from the federal government. It doesn't go up, doesn't matter how many kids you have, it's the same pot. So when the kids increase, which they've more than doubled since then, more than doubled, hello, look at the hearts, I love it. Um, When the numbers of kids go up and the money stays the same, that means you have less dollars per kid, right? So um, right now we're getting around $450 per preschooler for our district from the federal government. So $450 won't even pay for one of their like chairs. (laughs) So (laughs) there's that. So that's the federal government who mandated that we provide these services for three to five years. I probably spent that on a cardstock this year. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. That's another month, isn't it? <laughs> so um, then let's go to the state government. So we get our federal allocation, but then the state also, when they got the federal mandate that this had to happen, they decided they needed to put some dollars to it because the federal government only promised 40%, which again, they've never given us. So the state was responsible for the other 60%, which they've never given us, okay? So currently we received for however many students, we have a a count date on December 1 Mm -hmm. of every year where we count every kid who's enrolled on that day and has an IEP. So 
then we get $2,750, so $2,750 for each of those kids in preschool. No matter what their disability is, no matter what services we provide to them, we only get $2,750 for each child. Yes. You just said two twenty seven fifty. I that did. That would be fantastic. We only get twenty seven fifty. Sorry, twenty seven fifty. See, that's why I'm here. That's exactly. Why I'm here. I'm exactly. Keep me honest. Just yeah. <laughs> All right. So that number has not changed since 1991, which was the very first year we got money from the state for special ed preschool. So it hasn't gone up. It hasn't changed. No matter how many kids we have, no matter you know, no matter how much inflation costs have risen, no they, matter what the disabilities are, no matter what you know, I mean, it could be a speech kid or it some be, disabilities take cost more cost to a lot um, more. help meet those students' needs mm -hmm. than others. Right. So let me just give you one example. Let's take um, we have had a student who um, needed his preschool teacher, their own aid, they've needed speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, blind low vision services, deaf hard of hearing services. And well, we don't pay for it, but the nurse, but I mean. A nurse. I mean, we, I mean, it, all, I mean yeah. it all is dollars, right? They have nursing services, plus they need special equipment for their disability in order to learn, for accessible instructional materials. Transportation. Trans special transportation. Um, special playground equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of this stuff and those dollars, and we got $27.50 plus $4.50 from the feds, basically, for that child. So, um, again, the swing we bought for the playground. <laughs> Well, we just looked yeah. at, Kelly just showed me the swing, the freestanding. Oh, yeah, yeah, the freestanding we swing. Yeah. So, like I said, we, and, and that, mm -hmm. they cost a lot of money. That was a lot. So, like I said, we don't get enough to pay for preschool special ed, yet we're federally mandated to provide it or we can be sued. Okay? So, last year... Um, the Indiana Council for Administrators with Special Ed shout out, um, did a survey to all directors in the state of Indiana asking them oh. for dollar amounts for how much they pay for their preschool services out of what funds, okay? And after everybody turned their surveys in, the average in the state was that the federal and state monies only cover about 40% of the cost of providing those services. So that means the other 60% has to come from somewhere. And guess where it comes from? K-12 budget, because that's the only other money we have in a public school. So you have your operations budget um, in, the, in the public school and that's where that's gonna come from. So every year as costs rise and our money that we get stays the same, um, we are basically pulling more money away from our kindergarten through 12th grade students due to the fact that the government has not kept its promise to pay for special ed. So, but continue, and not that we don't think they should mandate it, obviously, I mean, right, it should be. Right, right, the right thing to do. But when they say you have to do this, but. right. Which is why <laughs> it's hard being the special ed director in a district because you have to tell everybody all the time, I'm sorry, we can't say we can't do it. If the child needs this, we have to pay for it. And if that means that something else doesn't happen, that's why there's not as many librarians anymore. That's why there's not as many art classes or shop classes or all the mm -hmm. things that made education so great um, in the past. I mean, those things, you have to take away things that you won't get sued for to provide the things you can get sued for. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's sad, but it's what's happening. So if that helps anybody to understand a little better, um, that is why we struggle to, um, to, to do what we do. So little tiny bit of good news though, there is, um, this is a budget year in Indiana, 
and I participated in a legislative breakfast with Indiana Council for Administrators of Special Ed. Um, did some lobbying down there myself. I, a lot of other directors did the same thing. We've written letters, we've made calls, um, talking about please increase this funding so that we can give our school general fund some relief um, to, to not have to pay for preschool. And the current budget bill, which is House Bill 1001, that is, um, has not passed yet, obviously, it's still being looked at um, and debated and talked about and amendments and all that good stuff. Um, the current version gives us an increase of $125 a student for the 1920 school year and then another $125 for the 2021 school year. So by then we will be getting $3,000 per student. Um, instead of the 27 to 50. So as long as that stays and nobody takes it out and, and all of that, um, we will get a little bit of an increase. Um, so that's a win in a way. <laughs> it's, it's better than getting nothing increased, which a lot of line items did not get an increase at all or only got very tiny 1% increases or 2% increases. Um, ours was over a 4% increase. But so like I said, it hasn't been increased since 1991. Exactly. exactly. So, so we got something, but again, it's just a start. We have to keep on them. We have to keep talking to our legislators about why it's important that they pay um, for this um, so that we can give some relief to those K-12 budgets. Because what they tend to do is, when, like, so here's what I fear. They're going to increase us by this much and this much over those two years, and they're taking it away from something else instead of, like, they're going to take it away from something else we need. <laughs> so that whole Robin Peter pay Paul thing um, happens quite often in budget conversations. So um, that's why I don't have them. <laughs> well, there's that. I don't have so the that's, patience for that. Yeah. So, um, like I said, if you feel led to um, call down and say that you support those increases in preschool funding, we would love that. Um, you can find out who your legislator is online and send them an email or call their office. That'd be cool. Um, but we hope that that stays in the budget, that tiny increase, if nothing else. But what we hope is that at some point that we can get some equity with what they're providing to like On My Way Pre-K and things like that. On My Way Pre-K, um, those pilot programs are getting over $6,000 a student. And it costs a heck of a lot less to educate a typical preschool student than it does to educate a preschooler with special needs. So just putting that out there, awareness, awareness, um, so that everybody understands a little bit more about um, the, the issue that we face as a public school is when we have services that are mandated by the federal government but are not paid for, unfunded mandates, um, that has to come from somewhere. And it typically hurts our general ed population, mm -hmm. which isn't fair. But providing services to special needs students is the right thing to do. So there has to be some way that we can make that, well, there has to be a win-win somewhere at some point. So hopefully our country at some point will make education a priority. <laughs> That is always our goal, right? Yes. All in, right. In so many ways. In so, so many, many ways. ways. Exactly. There so, so I hope we weren't uh, too overtly political today. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important for communities and, and citizens to understand where your tax dollars are going and why. Um, so that you can support the things you want to support and understand the things that, you know, like things that are important to you. Um, that way you can talk about them in a way that um, helps Sorry. others understand. I'd been holding that in and <laughs> oh, it just kept no. coming. I was trying not to, so I was like, oh, I'm going to have to. Well, That's okay. Um, are we going to oh, talk yeah. about March? Tomorrow is March. Oh, my gosh. Tomorrow is March. And have we decided? So, we've, I've kinda, I threw something out. Are we going to do that? I don't know. Remind me what it was. <laughs> She listens so well to I'm, me. Well, I remember what April was, but now I'm not oh, remembering what March is. Resources. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, we thought 
Um, I, lo- I love how you didn't even we, remember, and we, now she's like, now we're we. we. That's a great idea. Exactly. Let me That's jump on the thought. <laughs> it would be a good thing for us to talk about resources that are available out there for families. Mm-hmm. Families, right? Well, or even like I think and, and and teachers and teachers. Yeah, because I definitely think. Well, what really spurred me was I was thinking of all the different cool apps that we use, and um, but at mm-hmm. the same time, there are a lot of. I mean, we have a lot of weeks to to chat about things so um Mm -hmm. but we have talked about different like community-based resources that are out there and um so different things i think that um or even resources that we as teachers um kind of tap into that are outside of the school that the state kind of um or that are a part yeah part of our state networks that our Um, state provides yeah and so things like that um for sure so that's kind of where we were. Yeah, talking. and we're gonna we're I'm hoping that our spring break week, um, that we're gonna do something on location somewhere. Mm-hmm. Remind me to tell Yay. you something. I... So, um, we would love to interview someone, have another guest uh, um, on location. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, fa- resources for families and teachers coming up for March, and then April is Autism Awareness Month. So we figured we should probably talk about autism, mm-hmm. which is a great um, topic that we could literally sure fill an entire year. Days in April we can fill for a us year to, with, um, uh, with autism yeah. stuff, but we're gonna you know search through and find some of the best stuff to mm-hmm. to to share with y'all. Well, and I that. think to next or the March, I think we'll come up with some good resources that will mm-hmm. go right along. Um, oh yeah, with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, I said I'm pretty sure almost everything we talk about helps with all the disabilities yeah, so yeah because um, yeah, I don't it's not necessarily most of them aren't necessarily disability based it's more like this is what your need it what exactly. your need exactly and that's exactly. um you know for sure so all right well that's all we've got for you today um we hope you have a fabulous week rest of your week and um let's hope that spring is on its way around the corner I don't know it calls for snow on Sunday <sighs> of course it does and, okay Let's let's talk about this for a minute. Okay. Okay. I'm here. I'm because always. I love snow. She Every I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. If we, it starts snowing or there's talk of a snow day or whatever, like I get in trouble at school because I love it so much. <laughs> and um, it's apparently I'm the like um, uh, the weather. Uh, no, I, I can't. Jack Frost. That's who I Jack am. Jack Frost. Yeah. Sorry. And I but, myself am snow aversive. <laughs> Um, I don't like it at all. So, however, <laughs> I have always said I love snow in November, December, January, and February. Yes. Then I'm done. Then we're done. I'm done. Uh-huh. So from this point forward, if it snows, I can complain. There you go. There you go. So I'll yeah. be on board. With I love you. it until fe- once February is over, I'm done. Uh-huh. I'm ready to move on. So um, <laughs> it doesn't usually work that way. But no, it doesn't. We typically get one, don't we, in March almost well, every During year. March Madness, it has to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for so. sure. All right. Ooh, what? I just had the coolest idea, oh, but no. I'm sure March Madness is trademarked and we can't do this, but it would be neat to have, like, brackets of resources. Oh, <laughs> we should do that. That would be fun. We could do brackets. It doesn't have to say March Madness on anything, right? No. Yes. The tall okay. and short of it madness. That's right. That doesn't really roll off the tongue quite tall as well. Tall and short of it resources brackets I don't know but no but they're all winners everyone's a winner though yeah yeah true story exactly so maybe we'll just make a list (laughs) (laughs) maybe we could use in order to not offend certain resource networks one over the other (laughs) oh my goodness well if we make a list maybe we can make it fancy or something to make everybody feel better I don't know (laughs) we'll get in trouble (laughs) saying someone won (laughs) I don't know who we'd pick, though, or what you'd pick. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. All right, and we digress. That's it for the tall and the short (laughs) of it this week. Um, We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.